Good morning and good afternoon, Facebook. This is Blubbing for Britain, episode 81, and good morning, John. Good morning, Stephen. And we're waiting for uh, Stephen Silk to join us, and we are we, just waiting for a moment. <laughs> uh, you can't see what I can see. <laughs> right, I'm going to broadcast. And... Good morning, Stephen. Good morning. Can you hear me? Oh, yes. No. Stoke, we, we can oh. hear you. No, we can hear you. You're <laughs> fine now. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. All right. Did you, did you change the string on your tin can? Is that what you've done? <laughs> yes. Yeah, good old um, uh, Apple. Um, it's a great way to fix things. Okay. You'll be aware of it. Switch on, switch off. Switch off, switch right. on. So this, this is episode 81, and for the majority of us episodes, there have been four in the team live on Thursday. So I think we should just give a shout out to our friend. To Peter. Peter. To Peter. Uh, hoping all goes well today. We're looking forward to, well, we hope all goes well. All the best. Yesterday. Was it? And now it's yesterday. 10 o'clock this morning, Steve, Stephen. You just talking to him last night. Oh bloody hell! Okay, cool. All oh, right. Okay. Good luck. <laughs> yeah, we're all hoping everything goes well. If you are watching us at the moment, you know Peter, then just give him a shout out too. Um, and uh, we're thinking of him today, and we hope to hear from him uh, either later today or tomorrow, um, and to see him back on the show whenever he's ready to come back. Uh, there's a seat empty for him. Uh, permanently empty so looking forward to that uh, if you are watching this show please say hello then we know who you are and we can feature your comments on screen so our first morning, morning Tish and Tish is saying good morning my dear friends uh, good morning Peter and Lord bless and of course our, our call is if you're watching the broadcast please share and then lots more people will hear about it. But thank you for watching this morning. Now, <sighs> shall I jump in with some? We do. Yep, yeah, sure. If one of us is up for an award. Ah. Or two even. Or two even. You as well, John. No, no, two awards. Oh, two. Ah, right. Okay. It is. It is. Mr. Healy. Right. Uh, I was, sh well, <laughs> I was still speechless to be nominated for the live streaming awards. Uh, and I want to say thank you to Tish and to everyone who actually did, took part in the nominations. And the situation is that uh, voting started yesterday and the link to vote, I who sat them to have to hand, we're talking about the streaming awards, and the link to vote, I'm just going to post on Facebook. And if you can vote, please do. Now, I just want to say, first of all, I'm chuffed to be, because my peers, my broadcasting peers are in it. Uh, as everybody who's been broadcasting in the last year, who's been uh, voted for. And every vote counts. So I'm going to be asking everybody to vote over the, the next two weeks. Voting closes on the 30th of June. I've got to say this, on Blubbing for Britain, I am the only Brit, okay? So as the fourth the only Brit, so I look forward to your votes. And just to go down for a moment, uh, what's, not, what's this? That's the current, uh, current uh, where you are. 103 votes is what the leaders got. For goodness sake, we should be able to do something about that. Well, they have the See, advantage of being a big network, so. Yeah, but what is it saying? Um, Stephen Hayward. Who's he? Oh, he's, uh, he's 45, look, votes, and number eight. So we've got to get our act together to get him up yeah, there. Okay, so I sense a bit of a campaign starting. How about that? Okay. Um, yep. So, back on. Yes, I'm back on. 
campaign. Yeah, that basically uh, this. Uh, I've got to agree. Stephen Harewood is good, and Corinda's saying that is shaded out. Majority of the folks are in fact professional broadcasters, um, as as John rightly mentioned. So to be in such a good company is, is wonderful. Uh, so if we can get the vote out, uh, right? And sorry, that leaderboard which I. Uh, took a shot off, was with me on the top 10. May not own. Right. Thank you, Stephen and uh, and John and Tish and Corinda. Um, I might mention it again later in the show, but for now, <laughs> uh, that's, uh, that's when, when it. When does voting end, Stephen? June 30th. So you can vote once. You can vote for as many people as you want. So you could vote for me and anybody else who you recognise in the list. Uh, but you can only vote once. You can edit your vote. OK, if you decide to change it afterwards, you want to vote for more people, you can do so. And the mechanics are simple and straightforward. Uh, the person with the most votes wins overall and the person with the most votes in each category wins. So you might not win overall, but you could win in your category. And the prizes range up to a thousand dollar camera. So there is something at stake other than just, uh, you know, well, the award itself would be good. But I'm up against people who have shows which are have 30,000 viewers. So. All right. right. OK, now oh, back down. Stephen, to... uh, Stephen has a multi-purpose or multi-message mug. Go on, lift it up and show it to us. Well, it's not mine. mine... No, this Stephen. Look, he's live. <laughs> live laugh. <laughs> lift, live. Never mind. Live? <laughs> I was trying to be clever and obviously failed miserably. Yeah, it was worth a try, mate. Worth a try. Live life. Live. Live. And love. Ah, uh, right. But okay. you're live. That's what I meant to see. Live and live. Anyway. Oh, yes. Yeah. Right. Okay. And uh... so what's everybody's thoughts about the fire in London? Even Grenfell Tower. Yeah, where am I? Are you okay, Stephen? Uh, I, uh, you're breaking up. Smooth yes, anyway. you are terribly breaking up for us as well. Yeah. No, um, John. <laughs> it must be me. I can see Stephen perfectly. I can see John. I can see John perfectly. Sadly, we can't see you perfectly. <laughs> Right, I'll be back. Right, so Stephen, Stephen's going to refresh. I'll be back within a moment. I mean, uh, Grenfell Tower in London uh, on what day are we now? Tuesday night, John? Yeah. Or Tuesday morning. Tuesday morning, wasn't it? It happened in the early hours of the morning. Yeah. Uh, just an update, there are currently uh, 12 people who died. There are 14 people critical in hospital and they haven't finished searching the whole building yet. So we'll there hear more are, about there casualties. There are seven known missing people as well. H how many missing, John? Seven. Seven missing. Now, Sadly, including a 12-year-old. And those sto horrific stories. Uh, the, the lady who started off down the stairs with her four children and only two exited the building. Um, and well, we're going to wait until there obviously there will be an inquest into this and they'll look at uh, the building itself, and which was it's designed in 19 or well, built in 1974. It was refurbished just two years ago. Um, so, and we welcome back, Stephen. The, the, you're back. The building was refurbished two years ago. And uh, it's not the only building of its type. That's, if I was living in one of the adjacent buildings, then I would be a little bit worried. It's yeah. quite frightening, really. Um, the... Uh, <clears throat> The worst part is it appears to have come from a, a piece of white good g catching fire. It was they're a fridge. Sure. It's a fridge, wasn't it? They're not sure what. Well, a fridge or a cooker? 
they're not totally sure i think i've seen two different reports in one it's a fridge and in another one it's a cooker so it's very difficult to um to determine which it is yeah but it's still frightening the worst part i think is that the they they to a degree they're blaming the external installation insulation that was added two years ago and that's quite a, a worry where i live because all of the tower block flats in the solar hill area have all recently been clad with external insulation right as a question for corinda was it someone put fire in the building no it wasn't arson corinda a, a domestic appliance either a refrigerator or a cooker is thought to have exploded on the fourth floor the regulations when building a tower are quite simple and straightforward you should be able to contain the fire within one flat so if a fire starts in a flat it should not go outside outside that flat for a certain period of time giving everybody a chance to actually evacuate the building what could have happened in this case and i've got to use the could have is that the fire wasn't contained in the flat it went out through the windows it climbed up the cladding and stop me if i'm going totally wrong here it climbed up the cladding the outside of the building and the whole thing building yeah well what they're saying is that it actually went sideways in the cladding yeah. and in the corners there the corners are hollow of the cladding and that they acted as a chimney and pulled the fire up the building which is why you can see on some of the pictures flames going all the way from the fourth floor to the 20th floor it's frightening isn't it I'm glad I don't live in one. Stephen. Are you back? Yeah. Yeah, I can hear you. Bad, bad. Yeah, you're breaking up again, unfortunately. Corinda's asking how old was the building? It was built in 1974. So it's not that old, really. I'm afraid Stephen's frozen again. Right, okay, I'll drop Stephen back down. We're going for one of those mornings. Stephen, if you are watching, I have some good news for you. Um, I thought it's obviously with the, the residents of Grenfell Tower. If you want to, um, let me just take that off. If you want to donate to uh, help the people in Grenville Tower, then there is a link here which I'm going to post in the, uh, and that's the donate link. And that will give you all, that will give you all the charities which are actually registered charities rather than, uh, hello, Stephen. How about? Yeah. Yay! Oh, perfect, <laughs> yes. Right, I've got some good news for you in a moment, but uh, giving, if you want to donate, the link is now on Facebook and that will tell you which charities to use. And thank you, Trish, for, Tish, for sharing. That was a mouthful. Stephen, do you have a thoughts on, on the tower at all? Just, I just saw the front page. He's gone again. Now we've got signal problems. Uh, Absolutely horrific. Yeah. Again, I'm you've gone again yeah just before you go i want you to come back as well but i just want you to be aware of something uh apple have announced that safari 11 will support webrtc now to windows users that's not of any great moment uh but situation is that people have problems on macs because the version of, of chrome uh well Apple did not support WebRTC, it has to be said. And our whole technology here is, bought, is built around WebRTC. If it doesn't work, then you have problems. Now, the Chrome version obviously tried its best, the Chrome on Mac tried its best to work, but it didn't totally work. So it will be a part of Safari, which would mean that uh, the problems that people with Macs are having should, when it's released, disappear. So that's a piece of technical news. 
Uh, Stephen, do you want to come back? I'm not sure. I'm trying to look. <laughs> Actually, oh, right. I got a thumbs up as well. You're back. Can you hear? Oh, we can can you hear you first. Right. Okay. Um, yes. We. we <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry, Steve. This is live, and we're, we're, it's it's not going all according to plan. We're having a. Okay, I'll pop come back. I'll do right. Stuff. Okay. Cheers. Oh dear. Right. I mean, think things are improving, but uh, it's, uh, it's still difficult with the Mac, and hopefully Safari 11 will actually sort that out. Uh, uh, and uh, I'm trying to manage to not get a good deal. <laughs> oh dear. Ah, right. Okay. Now, uh, for anybody watching the replay. I can do this. Be Live there, in Five. There is a new personal mentoring program uh, called Be Live in Five, which will take you live on BeLive.tv with a Udemy course on mentoring. And it's working. That's all I can say. It's gone. For, John's got a phone call. Uh, I'm going to drop John down while he takes the phone call. I'm going to stay here. The uh, Be Live in Five mentoring program is open to everybody. Uh, we have the Udemy course, uh, which I'll put a link up for afterwards. And uh, John's coming back. And we have 845 students on the Udemy course. And we have so far, in the last week, trained six people to go live on BeLive.tv. It actually takes you from knowing how to run the BeLive.tv system to going live in your first broadcast. Now, there is a reason we're actually doing this. I'm going to drop that down. The reason for the Belive in Five program is that if you have a good first broadcast, you a second. So this is about retaining people. It's an official Belive.tv initiative uh, with myself and Tina Shang. And we've done the Udemy course. And Tina and April and David and David and Peter, when he's back with us, and uh, Brigetti all provide the one-to-one -one training. We're having fun doing it, and we're taking people live for the first time on BeLive.tv, and uh, it's working very well. Uh, we want more people to go live in 2017. All right, okay. Silent call on my landline. <laughs> si oh, I, yeah. I mean, that's a silent call. Number you recognised? Oh, it doesn't have a display. Oh. It's a, That's not good. It's a conference phone, so I can work hands free and talk to people. Yeah. But it doesn't uh, have to play on it. All right. Now, last weekend, you were off to a pot of plants. How did that go? Which? Um, well, the plants are still in their pots, um, but I've tamed the jungle, and uh, Today I've got to dig it over and uh, run over it then with the rotavator and hopefully I'm going to plant the pots. Plant, plant, plant the pots that are in, you know, I can't even get my words straight now. Plant the remaining dahlias that are in their pots into the ground before I go on holiday on Saturday. So, yes. Yes. Right. Okay. Um, the, the plot where they've gone was... Yep you up to here in weeds because it's a new a new plot we've taken over but it's higher than our plot and doesn't flood so much what about you how are your chickens uh best not to talk about chickens at the moment there are four there will soon be three. Oh dear um it's one of the penalties of keeping chickens um yep so the next question is from tish how's your new vehicle john new vehicle Oh, well, my wife's, wife's a new car. Um, I don't know. I've not been in it. <laughs> I know one says I'm going to be washing it today because it's got bird poo on it. And uh, I don't want the bird poo burning into the nice new paintwork. So. But I haven't actually driven it since I drove it back from the garage. 
Mm. Right, sorry, I just, I, I was trying to uh, sort something out behind the scenes. Uh, because as we're actually broadcasting here, people still message us, although we've got the phone switched off and what have you, but occasionally get messages in the background. And I'm trying to get across to somebody that I am actually live at the moment. And we uh, go away. <laughs> I'm still being messaged. I don't understand. And uh, Rebel, if you're watching this, I'm a, I'm actually live, and it's difficult to practice and uh, be live on, on video at the same time. So my apologies, I will get back later. Um, and today we're actually at the four o'clock, Rebel and I are interviewing a gentleman from Pakistan about one of the charity charitable causes he's uh, promoting uh, in Ramzan. Now I've learned that uh, Ramadan, we will call it Ramzan, it's actually called in Pakistan. Uh, Corinda will correct me if I'm wrong. Um, but obviously we're part way through the uh, the period. Day mm. eight today, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. Now, with two Lib Dems on the show, we can talk about something which totally sad. We got a letter through last night, an email through last night, uh, minutes before it was announced, that Tim Farron has resigned. Now, he resigned because during the early part of the election, he's the leader of the Liberal, Liberal Democrats. Both John and I support Liberal Democrats, so this is pertinent to how, how we feel about things. And during the early part of the election, he was in fact chased by the press uh, over his Christian beliefs. And he said, quite rightly, my Christian beliefs are my own. Ruling this party is something that I do in the public my personal beliefs should not be part of anything that you're actually uh, asking about during this election. And the net effect is that he resigned because he felt he could not continue to run the party when these people were chasing him for, for his beliefs. Now, we have a separation in the UK of church and state. And it seems to be, be crossing boundaries, doesn't it, John? Cause yeah. Um I think it was a boring, crap subject anyway. Um, so subject that's been done to death. That what they were chasing him yep. about, really. What's it got to do with politics? You know, it's not a political statement, is it? It's a a personal statement he made, and uh, I'm kind of rather in tune with him. I think what he what he was harassed about is wrong too. So. Yeah, I, Maybe we're old fashioned or whatever, but to me it's wrong. So, I this is gay marriage, by the way, in case anybody's wondering what we're talking about. Yeah, we're, we're talking about Tim Farron, uh, who is, was the leader of the Liberal Democrats, and uh, he's effectively been hounded out of office because he didn't see any way he could continue as leader. He's continuing as an MP um, because, oh, of course, since last Thursday, John, we've had the election results, haven't we, when we did the show on Friday? <laughs> and nothing's happened since. Well, We're in, in limbo. What, what do you think of the DU? really in some respects in that um, our beloved Prime Minister has gone cap in hand begging in Northern Ireland for support. To a party that I would find difficult to support. Um, anyway, on the some of their stances, political stances, but uh, I just see it all well, for art, and I see us all back in October voting again. Personally, I I, I agree. I, I think that I would find it difficult to actually uh, believe everything the DUP stand for. Uh, it's against religious beliefs and political beliefs, and but they are in, the, in a strong bargaining position because without them, the uh, conservative majority cannot effectively um, rule parliament. But and they're going to find it going to find it difficult anyway, aren't they? Even with them, they only need twelve dissenters, and they they haven't got a majority. So you know, and it's quite often that. 
12 people in their own party descent. So, you know. Well, yeah, it's going, it's going to be difficult to govern, isn't it, Stephen? Hello, welcome back. Hi, uh, I think it was... Hooray! Uh, we can hear him! <laughs> it was the network. Um, that's what I'm saying. Anyway, so, uh, election. <laughs> Anybody remember that? About a week ago? Yeah, we do. Such a lot has happened, hasn't it? We've got the... Um, can I say this out loud? You can say what you want. Oh, I can? Cool. Well, it's, it's, it's recorded for... <laughs> forever it's up to you are you ready um no so we've got the racist homophobes from northern ireland someone working with a right-wing leader who managed to lose her majority stunning style trying to cobble together a deal which will screw up the peace agreement in northern ireland what the hell <laughs> what the hell what are they thinking of well, my, I have no idea. John Beatty was on yesterday lunchtime, and he's you know, yeah. he, he, he a bloody great thinker. That bloke is, you know, he's a really good um, talker. And um, I just don't know. I don't know what to think. I do. I did. I did like Jeremy coming into the House of Commons the other day, getting big cheers from his side, and the oh, real yeah. stony faced. And your man, in fact, it's that both of you. Your man has quit the leadership. Oh, uh, we, we talked about that while you were away. <laughs> Did you mention how the hell does a god botherer actually? Uh, why? Why did he go? He what? went. He went because he could not uh, lead the party effectively because he was being questioned. Well, he'd be questioned every single election, every single chance they press get over his religious beliefs and you can't have a leader of a party who is in any way vulnerable well <laughs> saying that there isn't a leader of a party who isn't vulnerable. that was a daft statement wasn't it i mean is he is he saying that liberalism is at odds with you know, no no he's it, not gone because for anybody in the party he's left because of the press yeah. 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 Cause. Is the cause the fact that he doesn't think that a Christian belief is compatible with liberalism? Right, just no, to, uh, it's uh, the uh, hanging of the press on topics that are not really Liberal Party topics. Yeah. Personal but, attacks that have driven him out. From the first day, the very first day of my leadership, my first questions about my Christian faith. I tried to answer with grace and patience. Sometimes my answers could have been wiser. At the start of this election, I found myself under scrutiny again, asked about matters to do with my faith. I felt guilty that this focus was distracting attention from our campaign, obscuring our message. Journalists, what they see fit, the consequence of the focus on my faith is that I find myself torn between living as a faithful Christian and serving as a political leader. A better, wiser person than me may well have been able to deal with this more successfully, to remain faithful to Christ while leading a political party in the current environment. To be a political leader, especially of a progressive liberal party in 2017, and to live as a committed Christian to hold faithfully to the Bible's teachings has felt impossible to me. I am liberal to my fingertips, and liberal liberalism means that I am passionate about defending the rights and liberties of people who believe different things to me. There are Christians in politics who take the view that they should impose the tenets of faith on society. But I have not taken that approach because I disagree with it. It's not liberal. It's counterproductive when it comes to advancing the gospel. Even so, I seem the subject of suspicion because of what I believe and who my faith is in. In which case, we are kidding ourselves yet to live in a tolerant, liberal society. That is why I have chosen to step down as leader of the Liberal Democrats. Right. That's the statement that was put out to Liberal Democrat members. So that's them's the facts, uh, because that's exactly what he said and exactly why he did it. I, I uh, agree with the, the commentary that was made last night that this is a sorry state of affairs, uh, that the press should be. Uh, should do that. I mean, if, if this was if this was France, it just wouldn't happen. But I'm not saying we should be French because that's European. And we don't talk about Europe anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I, I'm sorry, I, just, I still don't really get it because, um, again, is it is he saying that Christianity is 
um, not acceptable if you're a liberal. And is that? No, he's not saying that. He's saying that instead of concentrating on him being the liberal leader, they're concentrating on his personal beliefs. Yeah, and he just bat it off like the rest of them do. Do that. Just bat it off. Yeah, well, um, I didn't. Well. Hey, that's. that's yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, at least he's not blaming type 2 diabetes for being a complete idiot and not being able uh, to have uh, a discussion. Uh, oh, be careful, John. Be careful. Oh, yes. <laughs> Extra arsehole for in Tim Fallon. I thought, well, I'll have a go at that to <laughs> woman. I promise you, I wasn't having a go at Tim Farron. Farron, Fallon. Fallon, it is. Is, is um, Christianity at odds with liberalism? Whether it's no Farron or not, I don't. No, do it's, a, it's at odds with it's at odds with our press. <laughs> <laughs> wow. It's the press. It's the press who yeah. uh, more, more to the put point, people's judgment. You know, if I can't, if I'm only going to increase, um, pay a policeman two pound, two pound eighty a week, is that the fault of type two diabetes? That's my question. <laughs> You're doing the devil's work there, John. You are. You <laughs> are. I mean, media. Yeah, has, I've uh, never liked the woman. Yeah, but, I have never liked. Uh, it. I, I um, did, did you notice that her election, she got something like sixty percent of the sixty-two percent, sixty-two percent, sixty-two percent of the vote. Yeah. So whatever poison has been um, sent out against set against her during the campaign, and whatever her private medical issues are. You, she, I think, actually, hasn't she got apart from Corbyn? Hasn't she got the biggest? Report? I think you're missing the point. She actually said yesterday that she made some of those mistakes because she has type two diabetes. She actually said that yesterday. Yes, and it's probably it could well be true <laughs> because if you, if you don't if you don't eat regularly when you have type two diabetes, then it problems. And people have identified with the problems that she described. Now, whether it's 100 percent accurate to give the, that as a reason, I would, we don't know. But it is a fact that unless you control your diabetes properly, there are results that none of us would like. Unfortunately, our regular type 2 diabetes expert is currently under the knife. So uh, we can't get an expert's opinion on it. No, we don't. We don't have Peter with us uh, on that. Uh, right. Okay. To the cricket then. <laughs> right. I just want to say to uh, John and, and Stephen have disappeared. Uh, it was the semi-finals. It was the semi-finals yesterday, and England were playing Pakistan. And I just wanted to on record that the best team on the day won. That Pakistan uh, beat England. John, can you hear it? Through to the final. And that's the that's the just congratulations to Pakistan on uh, actually winning yesterday's match. Okay. What about England winning the World Cup? Exactly. Good point. Well, right. Tell, tell us about that. Then. The under twenty team. I mentioned it last week that, that they were in the semi final. They actually beat Venezuela in the final to win the under twenty World Cup. <laughs> well done, boys. Do you know what? Boys, only one of the 13 players in the, that, that played in the first team in the Premier League. Big opportunity all the others, there. All the yeah. others struggle to get match time. Well, just a, a shout out then, uh, because in the full international between England and France, uh, there was a yeah, certain goalkeeper. A bunch of idiots, yes. <laughs> no, that's not my point. <laughs> When the goalkeeper in the second was, a, was a certain Mr. Heaton, who happens to be the goalkeeper of Burnley, saying that he's done his debut for England, and uh, whilst the result didn't go as we wanted, uh, it's good to have somebody from Burnley or who plays for Burnley in That's the team. Cool. I mean, those were the days when the people who played for a town actually lived there. They're long gone. 
And talking of goalkeepers, what are the 30 million for Jordan Pickford? Who? So, ah, you see, the Sunderland goalkeeper has been bought by Everton for £30 million. Jesus. And it's a record record for an English goalkeeper, and it's the second highest payment for a goalkeeper worldwide. Is he, have you ever, is he any good? <laughs> well, look, he didn't keep Sunderland up, but they didn't do as bad as they could have because of him. Right, okay. And we had George, Jack, Jack Botland from Stoke City. Did he actually get on? on um, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, and so there you are. Somebody from, from Stoke. That's recognition of the power of the two teams that Stephen and I support. Goodness, I quite agree with you there. Did I quite agree. Um, Butland missed almost a year of football. Yeah, with a broken ankle. And he's back and determined to prove blah, blah, blah. But, I mean, Joe Hart, I mean, did you see those two goals from Scotland? Those brilliant free, quick, free kicks yeah. in the dying embers of the match. Yeah. Hart was nowhere to be bloody seen. <laughs> You've got to get rid of that guy. It's just... <laughs> and get a Jack Button and your mate as reserve, Steve, Stephen, uh, yeah. and playing for the team. That yeah. make a big difference. That's so good. Now, wh while we, we're staying with sport and stay with cars, the, I'm talking about the Hammond of uh, Top Gear fame. Well, what do we think of his latest? Did you see adventure? the car? Yeah, I saw the car. I thought, how the can anybody get out of that? He got but out of it before it caught fire. Yeah, but it, it, it was upside down, wasn't it, when it yeah. crashed? So we had to scrabble out. And then it caught fire a few seconds later. Yeah. I mean, talk about... He, was, he actually got out and then, regardless of how uh, injured he was, um, one of the stewards just dragged him away. Yeah. <laughs> and he's looking to have a steward there, to be honest. Was it Was it an actual race battle? Well, or? It's a hill climb. And he'd uh -huh. gone through the finish. And after the finish, there's a left turn. And he didn't right. go left. He went right and down right. the hill. It was blamed on understeer. He's like, a, he's like a, a cat, isn't he? He's got nine lives. Oh, yeah. Well, no, he hasn't. He's got about four left, I think. Because <laughs> <laughs> he's had the motorcycle crash. He's had the dragster crash. He's had this crash. Yeah. yeah. Well, it made for some good footage on that. Um, the, the reason there was a steward was that he cool. went over the edge of the hill and he went down and he came to the road that the approach to the bottom of the climb and the, the stewards on that road if he'd gone round the corner and then gone off the road there would have been nobody but he apparently he missed a house by feet oh. do you think he's insured <laughs> think he's will anybody insure him that's, <laughs> yeah that's the point <laughs> Stephen, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, dear. um Talking of it, I um, I recently signed up to Amazon Prime mainly because I've been buying things and it, it, I'm actually saving money from a postage and packing, but it means you get all the Prime other stuff as well. And I've, watched, I've watched the first three grand tours and uh -huh. I'm unimpressed. Oh. They just don't have the magic that Top well, Gear had. Yeah. I thought the first one was fab and maybe that's because i wanted it to be fab with it being the first one second one when they were going around a um military uh base playing with guns and stuff i thought was a bit too far and the rest of them have been very entertaining um and and you know they're just doing what they did on top gear well maybe i've got to watch it film, but exactly what they want, right? instead of us paying up for the license fee for this stuff you, you pay it by, in fact, I, I don't pay Sue, Sue Amazon works. Um, but they're just doing exactly what we want them to do, which is just dick around in cars yeah. and uh, have adventures, which we'd all, we can imagine if the three of us managed to do a, an adventure like that. Oh, <laughs> where should we go? Come on, let's. let's... Blabbing for Britain does the top, uh, the grand tour. Blabbing for Britain does Wales. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's, that's the ambitious part. part. Finishing in Stoke at a bet 365. Yeah. Stoke, no to, Stoke to Paris. 
I did Stoke to um, south of France about 10 years ago in a Nissan GT thing, turbo, um, antique car. A bunch of us did it for charity. Yeah. Um, but we ought to, I think Blabbing for Britain goes international because we can have, obviously we can't be streaming personally from the car because we get Sergeant TCS on our on a backs quite rightly. We could have all sorts. Hey, we could we could um, we could do some damage there. Well, hopefully not damage. <laughs> I know what you mean. I remember going down a, yeah. a, to a tunnel in um, south of France, and the car I was driving dropped a bit of his exhaust onto the guy behind me. He was also in the in the rally, so to speak. Yeah, missed his car by about a centimetre. <laughs> he wasn't pleased, but you know what can you do? You you drive bangers down there, down there, and you get that sort of thing. Um, yeah, I mean it's fantastic, I, fantastic driving on French motorways as opposed God, to yeah, it's absolutely incredible. I've never driven in Germany. Have you driven on the autobahns? You know the sort of do whatever speed you want. I've been driven on the autobahns. I haven't actually driven on them. Slight yeah. difference, but yeah, I I'd love the French motorways um, because there is one. Was, there is one top tip I can give you: do yeah. not travel by car from Paris to the south of France, uh, do not travel on August the 1st. Well, no, that's the Black Weekend. <laughs> I mean, that, that's it. I mean, when they... Do about 400 bloody miles. Christ, it's so slow. So much traffic. And well, if you get, empty. If you get, get stuck in traffic on that weekend, then you can be in the same jam for three or four hours. There's no... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know and uh we learn yeah travel in july come back the second week in august is the best way <laughs> uh but yeah south of front i used to uh, love driving from uh from burnley down to uh dover in the early days got the ferry across to uh the calais then later we got the sea cat to boulogne and then we went under the tunnel so did it for 10 years and then drive it to amiens stay overnight in Amiens, and then from Amiens down to Lyon, yeah, which is the biggest drive of the lot, and stay overnight in Lyon. So we took, the journey was part of the holiday. So, yeah. I mean, yeah. Yeah. once you're driving on the French motorways, you can sit there and you can just relax and enjoy the scenery and bore everybody because you go for mile after mile after mile, and you're doing a, an 800-mile journey in total. But by the time you get to the end and you reach the south of France, you reach Fréjus or Nice or Cannes, then you are totally chilled and uh, you can just relax by the pool. We can do it slightly different way. 24 hours from Stoke to Nice. Bloody hell. That was, um, what is the ratio of car accidents in the UK? Need a bit more there, Tish. Um, well, yeah, it did. Uh, mm. depend, you, you, we need a bit more of, um, of a question. Uh, but it was the. Yeah. Uh, Rue de Soleil? Rue de, Rue de oh, oui. Soleil. Oui, monsieur. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Rue de Soleil. Rue de, Rue de Soleil. Um, and yeah, and I just love the area. Hey, you, mean, know around, you know your Angelica does the um, German training? Language she does, training. yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, we stayed at um, Centre Parks in the uh, north of France. I can't remember the place. Okay. And I'd hired a bike and I was about to take it back as we were going home and I, I tried in pidgin French to talk to the, um, the Frenchy guy, and this German next to me said, ah, allow me to help. <laughs> and he got my book, uh, my bike booked in. And I've, I've never felt so embarrassed in my life. So that's when I took some German language training. And yeah. that, my experience of that culminated in a place called Krefeld in, in Deutsche. And I went into a, a bakery in the morning and I said, Ich möchte ein Brot mit Kaiser bitte. So, as you all know, that's I'd like a sandwich. Um, yes. And he said, Certainly, sir. Would you like it in a bag? <laughs> I thought, that's, uh, you it out. How dare I try my best to watch you throw back at me. Have a word with uh, you, please. <laughs> and uh, hello, Michelle. I mean, that's, that's the thing. I mean, we do our best when we go abroad, France, Germany. And we'd learn them before we go, and we know the phrases, and we practice them, and and use Duolingo, and and then when we get there, 
as you quite rightly just pointed out, they know we're English straight away. It must be the shirt or the shorts. It's not the accent, obviously. It's our clothes. We're not properly dressed for the, you know, we're not locals. No, no. I think that's, that's probably one of the tells. I've been uh, banned from wearing shorts on holiday. I have to wear the sort of whitish cream slacks, you know, that sort of thing. Because right. uh, it's not a good start. I see Michelle's uh, in a bra advert again. Hello, boys. Don't you remember that advert stuck on all the posters about 10 years ago? Hello, yeah. boys. Uh, never mind. Obviously. <laughs> Uh, you, no, no, <laughs> you're on your own there, John. But <laughs> it, it was a much talked about uh, advert, bra advert. Yeah, uh, well, in a bra and just the words "hello, boys" underneath. Uh, and, uh, Christensen, how about that for memory? Uh, uh, Michelle's denying all knowledge, and uh, yeah, okay. Now that's a non sequitur, John. You've got to pick and think of a topic now. Uh, um, today is the fifteenth. And it's BBC Music Day. And uh, all the tram riders in Birmingham are having a surprise today. Because <laughs> Ozzy Osbourne is doing all the tram announcements. <laughs> Was he, is he doing Crazy Train by any chance? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, but he's been in the studio, pre-recorded all the announcements. <laughs> and... Uh, yeah, it went over my head, whatever crazy train was. <laughs> <laughs> Famous Sabbath, or is it Aussie hit? Well, I think I have every Black Sabbath album under the sun, but... Uh... So, so we've got Google tells us about it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, so uh, everybody in Birmingham is having, having a bit of a surprise on the tram today. All the announcements or are... <laughs> Boy, Aussie... It was on Blizzard of Oz. <laughs> right, I've tried, Tish, I've tried to get some stats on the UK traffic. Um, so apologies for if I was looking away then. We'll get some for next week and then we'll talk about it. But I get the impression in the UK, uh, as opposed to other countries, anybody here ever driven in Cyprus? Nope. Okay. Never been there. Around Paris? Yeah. Right, okay, now, we, now we're talking. Uh, the peripherique around Paris is uh, a racetrack, but it's not officially known as a racetrack. It just happens to be one. But it's a scary experience. Driving. Where, where's the scariest place that you've driven, Stephen? Uh, either Italy and in, in Rome or... Uh, Orlando in Florida. Oh, in America. Because I couldn't get used to the the roads over there. I eventually got it, but I was still nervous. And also, um, you pay lots of tolls in the States, lots and lots of tolls. So if I was coming from my place to, to John, I'd be paying six different tolls. I know we, we can't option pay one toll. But then I chucking the um, coins into the thing, into the meter, into the into the meter, and it didn't work. So I just drove on. And I thought, oh crap! I'm going to have a I'm going to have an American state trooper trying to get me car off, and this sort of stuff. But it was um, it, they were they're nice roads. Don't get me wrong, but it was, it was a bit it was a bit scary to start off with. So, what about you, Stephen? What's your pack? Hey, we're doing the. Um, Top Gear thing, you know, your favourite place in the world. We, we could, we could well, if we work at it, we could well work up a show that would be worthy. Um, my my worst experience of driving is in Malta. Uh, in where? Because Malta, Malt, Z zero point, no point, Malta, M A L T A. Yeah, home where, of the Crusades. Which bit were you on the letter? Yeah, yeah. I mean, they're they're just mad there. They <laughs> they're just they're just totally totally mad and the cars shouldn't be on the road i don't think they have mrts and uh cutting up is is not something that they do occasionally it's something they do continuously and there's some scary bloody hills over there if i remember rightly oh yeah yeah so mm -hmm. scariest would be malta favorite would be france um john 
I think the scariest place I've ever been driven is Germany by my then boss, a guy called John Lefwich, who ended up as a European vice president of Microsoft. Um, but the scariest thing was he drove on the wrong side of the road when <laughs> we came out the hotel. <laughs> oh dear. The best places well, I did spend nearly four months in California and I had this wonderful, nice, big, meaty car and um, I enjoyed commuting around the Bay Area. I bet you did. Yeah. I bet you did. But that was back in 1986. So it was a long time ago. Well, I worked in Silicon Valley for a while. On, um, on this system, Stephen. Sorry? If we took a video, you know, any video, can we screen it within a window on on this system? We could. We could. I'm not sure about the sound. Something would... we perhaps need to play with it. Yeah, we could play a bit. We like could play a video. Share a desktop, and I'm not sure whether you actually get the sound of the desktop. Oh, okay, cool. Uh, Monday, Monday. Maybe that's something we should try between now and next week. A challenge for the week then is to try and get a video playing on here. Um, now, talking anyway. of videos and live, there's a new little piece of software going around only came out on Tuesday. It's a piece of software from a British person. And um, you can film your video, edit it, etc., And then you run it through this little piece of software and you choose uh, how many, um, how, how many uh, likes and, and all those kind of things you want. And it then broadcasts it to Facebook Live uh but displays <laughs> however many so you can have thousands of likes streaming across the bottom and it's pre-recorded but goes out through live isn't that cheating of course it is <laughs> <laughs> the, the the thing that i mean there are uh checks in place on both facebook and youtube to check that a live video is actually live well, um, we, it works because I watched it yesterday, demonstrated, and it works. Well, uh, I assure you, as soon as it can be, uh, I mean, th there are systems around which say, okay, record your video and then send it out webinar style 24 7 on Facebook as if it's live. And th the problem with that is that you, you're actually, okay, you can create engagement, uh, but you're not capturing any names or anything. The only way to actually get in contact with people on live video. Is to actually this is this is sort of groundbreaking stuff. Is to actually be live and notice who's actually commenting and then make a note afterwards to contact them. That's the only way. The only benefit of doing this, well, one of the benefits of doing this is to actually be able to make contact with people. I mean, that's especially true of the Monday show where, where thousands of people watch, and uh, I can go through afterwards and make new contacts and invite them to be live in five, um, where you can learn all about. Going live on video. Advert, advert. Well, let me <laughs> tonight in Stoke at the uh, Mitchell Theatre, there's a thing called uh, Stoke on Tech, and it's a gathering of techies, and it's using a system called Meetup, Meetup.com, and I just want to tell you that it's absolutely brilliant, and um, it's going to be on Facebook Live. Um, so. I'll, huh. I'll um, put the link on my feed later on. I won't be in it, you know, because I'm not uh, technical enough to do anything about it. But it's a damn good meetup. And there's a new one starting very soon called Oat Cakes on Tech. And then we've got the Staffs Tech Meetup as well. So there's loads of stuff going on in tech in Staffordshire. And, um, <laughs> Because, of course, it's your local delicacy. Is it's that why it's called? Okay. Premier, premier delicacy of Staffordshire. Probably Stoke, actually, but we'll, we'll, we'll let Staffordshire be in. But it is the most beautiful delicacy going. So we couldn't have a get knotted technology with your Staffordshire no. knot? No. Okay. <laughs> okay. Have you ever had one? Have you ever had one? Yeah, they sell them in the supermarkets around no, here. You know? No, no, they don't. They're the <laughs> fake oat cakes, for God's sake. Ain't a, nothing like a real thing, John. 
They are actually Staffordshire oat cakes. They have the Staffordshire not on the packet, and they are actually made in Stoke on Trent. Yeah, but they're not oat cakes. There's only three or four shops in Burslem and Stoke that sell real oat cakes. The stuff you get in Morrison's are just horrible. The the real thing, um, maybe we'll have an oat cake lab one day. I'll just ask you some recipes. Blabbing on oat cakes. Like a blabbing for <laughs> So that's my advert out. Two adverts. Are you going to close us down soon, Mr. Healy? Because my I think so. You're into the fucking Lord, Lord Buckethead um, made the American TV. Yeah, he was on John Oliver's show, wasn't he? Yeah. They flew <laughs> him out there and. Uh... <laughs> I thought we might discover who he was, but we didn't. He put them making the foreign secretary or something like that. Right. right. Okay. Uh, to everybody who's watched us today, thank you to Tish and Michelle. And I'll put Michelle's comment about driving. So it appears in the final video. Uh, Michelle was in Rome when she had her adventures driving. Uh, we are going to be back next week at 10 o'clock with further adventures of the Blubbing for Britain team. We'll be talking cars. We'll be talking about accidents. And we'll be talking, hopefully, and about I'll our friend. And I'll join you from Devon or Cornwall. And Because I'm on holiday next week. Right, and thank, thank you, Tish, for the best wishes um, in the voting. Open until June 30th. We're going to be running a campaign, and uh, that's good. And, Stephen, your thoughts? Just uh, make sure you check out my Facebook feed for the link to Stoke on Tech this evening. It'll be fun. And we're having pizza, but you won't have pizza because you're... <laughs> well, you we can have pizza and watch you. You can watch no, it. No, no, no. I, could, I, could, I could Facebook live, couldn't I? Eating my pizza. That's going to be a great, um, a great watch, isn't it? Right. John, if you'd like to close and we'll wrap it all up for this week. Um, what am I going to say today? Uh, I'd like everybody to have a, a great week coming up. Uh, we're supposed to go have a heat wave next week. So don't forget your sun cream or your after sun if you forgot your sun cream. Have a great week. Enjoy yourselves. I'm on holiday next week. On the edge of Dartmoor, so I'm going to do my absolute best to join in, but there's no guarantee. Um, so it's goodbye from me, it's goodbye from him, and it's goodbye from the man that's usually in the background running controls. But it's all day today. And I just hope okay. you get your connection better up in Stoke, mate. I'll try, I'll try. Take care, guys. Take care. See you all.